Coming up next on Burbank On Demand, got trash bigger than your bin? What you need to know before the city picks up your bulky item. <laughs> Why is she yelling? Her safety tip just may save your life. And this Burbank office building opened its doors right when the economy was taking a dive. After a slow start, it's now home to some big names in the entertainment business. And we'll have a sneak peek at the next mayor's show in which Mayor Emily Gabaletti speaks with local homeowners who are taking steps to preserve Burbank's history. It's all next on Burbank On Demand. Hello and welcome to Burbank On Demand, a show about people and places in Burbank that you can watch whenever you want On Demand. I'm Drew Sugars, Public Information Officer for the City of Burbank. In today's show, we're going to have some helpful tips to stay safe and keep wild animals off your property. That's a bit later. First, now let's take a look at what's new in Burbank. Welcome to What's New in Burbank. The Veterans Job Fair is returning to McCambridge Recreation Center Thursday, March 6. The City of Burbank's Workforce Connection is partnering with the Verdugo Job Center and California Employment Development Department to match Burbank's veterans with a worthy employer. Attendees will get the chance to meet representatives from several agencies and companies, including Burbank and Glendale Police Departments, Warner Brothers, UCLA, Glendale Community College, Bank of America, and the California Department of Veterans Affairs. This year, the Veterans Job Fair is open to all members of the public. Recruitment staff encourages all job seekers to dress to impress, bring multiple copies of your resume, and a form of military, state, or federal identification. Register online at Burbank Veterans Job Fair 2014.eventbrite.com or in person at either the Burbank Workforce Connection or the Verdugo Job Center. Again, the Veterans Job Fair takes place Thursday, March 6th, from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. With spring approaching, you can add a little more green to beautiful Burbank by participating in the 59th annual Plant a Tree Month in March. For the next few weeks, the Burbank Civic Pride Committee will be raising money to help pay for new trees to be planted in Burbank. Your donation can be made in honor or memory of a loved one whose name will be read at a special tree planting ceremony Thursday, March 27th. Look for the donation form in the Burbank USA newsletter that arrives with your Burbank Water and Power bill during the month of February. You can also find donation flyers at city locations or on the city's website, burbankca.gov. Did you know that 50 to 75 percent of household water is used outside your home? To help Burbank residents reduce their water usage and save money, Burbank Water and Power will hold a free California-friendly landscaping workshop each month through July. Workshop participants will learn how low water use plants are a great alternative to a thirsty turf landscape. The three hour workshop will cover basic landscape design, how to pick the right water wise plants, turf removal, and basic irrigation systems. The next landscaping workshop is Saturday, March 8th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Community Services Building in room 104. There are a limited number of seats, so RSVP today by calling 818-238-3730 or go to BurbankWaterAndPower.com for more information. Burbank City Council members are inviting the public to a town hall meeting at John Muir Middle School Tuesday, March 4th, 2014. The open forum will give residents the opportunity to engage with the City Council regarding any issue or concerns that impact the community. The town hall meeting will be at 7 p.m. in the auditorium at John Muir Middle School, 1111 North Kenneth Road. Mayor Emily Gabaletti and the entire City Council will be in attendance, as well as City Manager Mark Scott and other City staff. The meeting will not be televised. I'm Peter Masurlian, and this has been What's New in Burbank. The departure of The Tonight Show from Burbank to New York City has no doubt, at least temporarily, left a hole in the city's media landscape. And as that show headed east, one might have thought the overall media-driven Burbank economy was headed south. Well, far from it. The best example is The Point, a 14-story office tower right across the street from The Tonight Show studio. As Peter Masurlian reports in this Burbank On Demand cover story, major media outlets continue to speak with their actions.
that Burbank is still the place to be. If you live or work in Burbank, you've probably driven by The Point, one of the newest and by all accounts one of the nicest looking buildings in Burbank. It's 14 stories tall and offers more than 480,000 square feet of office space. It's uh, certainly one of the largest buildings in the city, largest one we ever built, and we opened it 100% vacant. Jeffrey Worth's real estate company manages the property that was built by Crismar Construction, a company that's part of an established team with Worth and Worth's father-in-law of M. David Paul and Associates. They provide a seamless process for acquiring property, designing it, building it, and managing it. M. David Paul gave birth to his first Burbank building in the 1970s. That number now stands at eight. The property for the point was bought in 2005. Construction began in the booming 2007 economy, but it opened in mid-2009 as the recession hit hard. You know, we opened our Central Park building in 1984 when the market wasn't great. We opened our Pinnacle building in 2001 when the market wasn't great. We're committed to these buildings in the city, so we just see our way through it. And now, fortunately, we're 70% leased in this building here. Um, with a great roster of tenants. Some of those tenants are DC Comics, Legendary Pictures that has produced such movies as The Hangover, The Dark Knight Rises, and later this year, Godzilla. And there's Free Mantle Media, a London-based international company that produces, among other television shows, American Idol, The X Factor, The Biggest Loser, and America's Got Talent. And if Free Mantle is big and international, KCET Link is big and local. After selling its Sunset Boulevard studios, where it was headquartered for more than 40 years, KCET was one of the first tenants to move into the point two years ago, taking up two floors. KCET is now independent, having left PBS in 2011 due to a 40% increase in dues paid to PBS that totaled in the millions. So much of television is changing anyway, the last five years, the last 10 years, and in the next five years, but these stations are not going to be able to make it with the due structure that PBS requires from them. And uh, we basically, we're trying to be ahead of that curve. We've been a leader in that. We're now America's largest public, independent public television station. And again, that's why all these stations call us going, we're interested in what you're doing and, and how, are you, how are you sustaining it? Because we'd like to copy this. KCET now has a diverse mix of informational and entertainment shows, some of which come from Europe, China, and Japan. We're trying to do other things for our international programming and our international audience, the people who live in Southern California. When you look at Los Angeles, I can compare it maybe to Miami, maybe to New York, of just one of the most international cities in the world. And when you look at who lives here, uh, we're trying to be relevant to them and provide uh, each, each group uh, programming that's relevant to, to, to their community. Our two production control rooms can be... But KCET is not only producing shows and acquiring programming, it's a state-of-the-art production facility. We have a brand new facility now that we've moved to. We're on the fifth and sixth floor of this beautiful new building, uh, The Point. KCET was just awarded by Broadcast Engineering as the top, top local production facility of any city in the country because of all the new equipment we have. We have every single new bell and whistle that 2014 and 2015 needs and deserves for uh, your production. KCET has three studios that it rents out. The biggest is 2,500 square feet with a 17-foot ceiling and top-of-the-line cameras, robotics, and lighting. The other two are virtual studios with green screens and some of the same technical capability as the big studio. From Fox to FX to syndicated shows, Mazur says the facility is building a growing list of clients. From KCET, you can see another property Worth manages, the Burbank Studios, formerly known as NBC Studios, where Jay Leno taped The Tonight Show until February 6, 2014. Unfortunately, 164 odd jobs went with it, and I was just—I was just over there. They're clean. They're just taking everything out of the stage now. Um, but we'll find another show to come in. I don't know if we'll find one ever as great as the Tonight Show. I think Jay was a great part of this community and still is. But we're going to try our best to get somebody who will 
he'll try to step into the shoes that he that he filled very well here. I think the economy's improving. People are starting to make decisions to move again. People are starting to make decisions to grow again. So as all things point in the right direction, Worth remains optimistic, attributing much of it to location, location, location. Regardless of where the sign is on the hillside over across the way, this is the media capital, really, of the world. Nowhere else do you have this concentration of studios, period, in any city. And that's what draws people to this location. You know, people want to be in the middle of that. Reporting from the heart of the media district, I'm Peter Masurlian with the Burbank On Demand cover story. And some more positive signs. The Burbank Studios recently signed a two-year extension with Days of Our Lives to continue recording the longtime daytime soap opera right here in Burbank. Well, still to come on Burbank On Demand, recent mountain lion sightings on the Burbank hillside and surrounding cities leads to some tips to reduce the chance of any potential danger. And got a bulky item that's too far gone to donate to charity? Well, how you can work with the city to take it off your hands. That's when Burbank On Demand returns. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. There are many things that make Burbank such a special community. One of those is our unique mix of urban, residential, and wildland topography. And with that comes the occasional visit by nature from deer, coyotes, even mountain lions. Well, do you know what to do in case you come face to face with a wild animal? Walter Lutz is here to explain how to reduce the risk of danger. A mountain lion similar to the one in this video taken in Sun Valley has been seen recently roaming the hillsides of Burbank and, in one case, attacking a local dog. It actually punctured some areas of the dog. The dog was treated a vet. So these mountain lions are going after the larger animals. Animals such as these deer, which are their natural prey. The Verdugo Mountains that border Burbank are home to both of these animals, and it is at the base of these mountains where the city of Burbank established the Stow Canyon Nature Center to help inform and educate the public on everything nature, including the indigenous mountain lion. They're native to this region and to the Verdugo Mountains. Um, they used to have broad uh, animal corridors between the Santa Monica Hollywood Hills and the San Gabriel Mountains. Now with urbanization, it's made literally made the Verdugos an, uh, a wildlands island. So if you're thinking that these animals and their habitat aren't anywhere near you, well just turn around and you might realize that they're right next door. With the droughts that we've been having in the recent decades, um, the animals are coming down into the neighborhoods to get water, biggie, uh, because a lot of the springs have been buried under development. If you do find yourself face to face with a mountain lion, most importantly, do not run. Face the animal. If you have any small children with you, pick them up and make yourself look as big as possible and then follow this advice from our expert. So you stand your ground and you reach down and you find the one animal inside yourself that mountain lions are afraid of, and that's bears. Now, one thing that helps is throw up your arms or pull up your jacket behind you like a bear rising. Sometimes just that will make the animal step back. But generally, if he's decided to come towards you, you need to find your inner bear. You reach down and you bellow like a bear. So you go, Roar! That's a good suggestion for scaring away not only mountain lions, but also coyotes, which have become frequent visitors to our neighborhoods as well. To help keep you, your family, and pets safe, here are a few wild animal prevention tips. Do not leave children and pets unattended, especially when mountain lions are most active at dawn, dusk, and at night. Bring pet food inside to avoid attracting raccoons, possums, and other potential mountain lion prey. Do not hike, bike, or jog alone and install motion-sensitive lighting around the house. Follow these tips and hopefully you won't ever encounter four-legged neighbors like this. For Burbank On Demand, I'm Walter Lutz.
If you'd like more information, you can visit the police department's website, BurbankPD.org, and or visit the Stow Canyon Nature Center at 2300 Walnut Avenue, and that's above the DeBell Golf Course. There you can learn more about living next to some of our wild animals nearby. Well, Burbank's clean neighborhoods continue to contribute to the high quality of life for city residents. The city's public works department tries to make it easy to dispose of your green waste, recyclables, and trash with their multicolored bins. However, it's the large cumbersome items that can be a bit tricky. Remember, it's best to try donating to one of our many charities in town, but if the item is too old or beat up, the city's bulky item pickup program may be the answer. Here's Colleen Duffy Felix to explain how to use this free, convenient, and effective service. These public works employees drive the streets of Burbank five days a week, picking up large items left at the curb. The first thing you need to know about the bulky item pickup program is that nearly everything they pick up will go in the city landfill. So it's important to know what public works crews will and will not carry away. Workers will pick up furniture such as couches, tables, chairs, beds, mattresses, and metal appliances such as stoves, dishwashers, washing machines, dryers, water heaters, furnaces, air conditioning units, large TVs, and refrigerators. TVs and refrigerators have additional steps of preparation. Make sure you understand those steps before you place them out for pickup. Now for the items that the bulky item program will not pick up. They are automobile parts, including motors, tires, and batteries. Construction materials, such as bricks, concrete, ceramic tile, chain link fencing, dirt, rocks, roofing materials, duct or sheet metal materials, countertops, yard waste, paint, and other hazardous waste. To help you get rid of the items that are not collected through the bulky item program, the City of Burbank offers extra pickup for your residential style containers, temporary trash, and green waste dumpsters for an additional cost. If you have any questions, please feel free to call the Public Works Department at 818-238 3800. Remember, it's always best to recycle, so contact the Recycle Center at 818-238-3900 for a list of private haulers who will pick up and recycle construction and demolition materials. So once you've decided which item or items you want to get rid of, contact the Public Works Department two business days prior to your regular collection day. The phone number is 818-238-3805. You can also submit a request by sending an email to bulkyitemcollection at burbankca.gov. If you live in an apartment or condominium unit, you will need to call 818-238-3800 for multifamily unit guidelines. Whether by phone or email, it's important that you tell them or list exactly what is being picked up to avoid any confusion. For more information about how to request a bulky item pickup, go to burbankca.gov and search bulky item pickup. Once you've made your pickup request, place your bulky item at the curb or in the alley the night before collection. That's the night before and no earlier. When placing your items in the alley or at the curb, please clear the area of parked cars so the crew can easily access and remove the large items. And again, there are additional steps when preparing TVs and refrigerators. So make sure you understand what is required so those items do not create a hazard. The city's bulky item pickup program helps keep our city clean and safe. Better yet, the service is free and available year round. It's just a phone call away. For more information on the bulky item pickup program, call the Public Works Department at 818-238-3805 or go to burbankca.gov. The Burbank Public Works Department dumps up to three tons of bulky items in our landfill each day. So remember, charity first. Your donations will be greatly appreciated. 
still ahead on Burbank On Demand, a sneak peek at the next mayor's show that will go down in history, so to speak. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back to Burbank On Demand. It has already been three years since Burbank's year-long centennial celebration. Well, as time continues to move on, it's important that we bring our memories along for the journey forward. In the latest Mayor Show, Mayor Emily Gable-Luddy visits some Burbank homeowners who are making sure that our past is not left behind. Here's a sneak peek. Hi, guys. Hey, Greg Rayner, how are you? Good. How are you doing? So good to see you. Good and Kurt Solomon, great to see you. Hello. Good afternoon. We're going to spend some time talking to you about the Rock House this afternoon. Excellent. I wanted to ask you about one of the stories I heard about this house, and, and that is because Mr. Lane was an auto dealer, I guess, that Henry Ford himself stayed at this house. <laughs> uh, back then, Henry Ford actually would travel around the country to inspect these franchises. And um, he, he came to Burbank, uh, stayed uh, overnight with the Lanes, actually had dinner here in the dining room with them, and actually stayed in the, in the uh, front um, room, which had a convertible Murphy bed in it originally. She said he slept there and then um, stayed overnight uh, they woke up the next morning and he was gone. House, but what is the secret about this tree? Uh, I was told by the former owner that when the tree was a young tree that it was supported by the axle shaft from a Model T Ford and I guess over time it encapsulated it and he told me if I cut it down that I should be careful <laughs> because there's, a, there's metal inside the tree. I don't know if that's biologically possible, but that's what he said. These were, these were left to us um, when we bought the house by the previous owner. And we, we have some really nice photos of the house uh, back in the 40s. And one, one of the pictures that really continues to amaze me are the palm trees. These were about, let's say, three to four feet. But now you can see they're soaring at over 50 feet high. And so definitely a, a lot of characteristics uh, with the way Burbank's back in the 40s. Tell me about this special feature in the back of your house. I see it behind me. It's this vine right here. I had never seen something this gorgeous and it just grows across the house. I think it was trained to grow vertically or horizontally oh, yeah. across the house. And the flowers are huge. They're probably six feet or six inches wide. And they're just beautiful. They are really beautiful. I know you were calling them a trumpet vine. I think they're Salandra guttata. Okay. So I'll write that down for you and we'll both check right. it to I see. Did, I didn't know the name of it. it. Just We just call it trumpet vine. But as you can see from the stalk, it is a really old vine and it's in beautiful condition. So I'm going to attribute that to your gardening skills or your skills in hiring someone who knows how we to take care of it. Help. We have a lot of help with that. Right. But I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about neighborhood and how historic preservation can also carry over into a single look of a neighborhood. Something that the Heritage Commission has had a conversation is in regard to historic districts. And we can't wait for the residents to come forward because that's their opportunity. We did have a conversation with the planning board. It went before the planning board and it was approved so that residents are able to set up historic districts when they feel that that's something they want to do. The full-length Mayor Show will debut later in March. Be sure to look for it on the Burbank Channel or On Demand on the city's website. Well, that does it for this edition of Burbank On Demand. If you saw any story that you'd like to watch again or recommend to a friend or family member, just log on to BurbankCA.gov and click on the Burbank Channel or search Burbank On Demand. We'll see you next time.